Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on instrument repair. Today we're going to be going over how to fit a tenon and receiver for an airtight seal. Uh, this is something that, oh, let me back up. We're also going to have a bonus tip yes. on how to check this connection without specialty tools. So if you're just getting into things, we're going to have something for the pros and something for the non-pros. So Ryan, let's just... Yes. Let me just ask you, why is it so important to fit the neck connection on your saxophone? Uh, having the neck connection fit very tightly is, is just like having a pad seal completely. It's just another place for air to leak out. Um, and as if, you know, we had a, a leak here in this very top octave hip, it affects every single note thereafter. Same thing with the neck. If I have a leak right here, you can see it's going to affect every single note, especially down low. Okay, the more, the, the further you get from that leak, the more you're going to notice it, especially with the bell keys. Okay. Uh, they just don't have that resonance. So it's really important to have that neck fit extra tight. Okay. Well, why don't you take us through your process of fitting the neck? What's the first step? First thing is, is diagnosing. Um, you know, if you take the neck and you put it in the receiver without the, the neck key being, um, you know, the neck screw being tight and it wobbles, chances are it's probably going to be leaky. Uh, even if you go and tighten that neck, and it still wobbles or it's still able to turn, most likely you're definitely going to have a, a leaky neck. So the first thing is being able to identify that. Um, what I like to use here is our neck leak isolator. I also use a leak tester. Um, and what this is, is uh, when I tighten this screw down, it expands this rubber gasket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the, the receiver like so. I'm going to make sure that this gasket is below where the neck actually reaches into the receiver. I don't want it up too high because then the neck won't be able to go all the way in. So mm, okay. I put this in. If you if your horn has a high F sharp uh, tone hole, um, it's really important that to make sure that this gasket is above, slightly above that tone hole. Because again, you don't want that air to leak out of that tone hole. And then it's going to give you a false reading. So I put this down. I tighten this up. Now I've isolated this receiver from the rest of the horn. Right. I'm going to go ahead and put my neck in. Uh, I'm going to turn my leak tester on. And as you can see, when I turn it on, it's reading like a 10. So there's obviously definitely a leak. If I plug this hole up, you can see it goes down to zero. That's what we want. That means there's an airtight seal and no air is leaking out. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the neck like so. A lot of times this, you can see, doesn't have a neck key, but if it, if it did, um, a lot of times I still use my finger to cover up the octave pip. Um, a lot of times I don't trust the octopad, especially if it's worn and old. So I'll use my finger to cover this up and you can see, wow, this is still pretty leaky. Wow. Yeah, so what's what's that reading? That's like a like a four. Okay, that's unacceptable. Okay, and as you can see, it, it's definitely leaky. We want this to go down to a zero. And you can see when I move the neck around, mm. how it really changes as well. So it's it's very, very leaky, but we can probably tell anyway because of the, the overall feel. Although that's not a dead giveaway. Sometimes next that, feel like they fit correctly can still leak here at this connection. So um, what's happening is this tenon is too small for this receiver. Okay. Um, so what we would have to do to start off is actually expand this receiver. I'm sorry, expand this tenon. Expand the tenon? Expand the tenon. It's much easier to work with the tenon than it is to work with the receiver. Although I think we're going to talk about working with the receiver here a little bit. Okay. So let's, let's talk about how to expand that yeah. tenon. First thing we're going to do, uh, and it seems kind of kind of basic, is to clean the tenon off. A lot of times we'll have dirt, grit, grime, who knows, whatever. Um, so I'm just going to take a little bit of, this is just some denatured alcohol. You can use any kind of solvent. You can use soap and water. And you want to make sure that you clean the tenon. And then actually the receiver, too. It's a good idea to just to wipe it out from the inside. Mm -hmm. right? um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to expand this tenon to fit this receiver. The area I'm going to start is at the top of the tenon. I'm going to call this the top and this the bottom. Okay, so this is the top of the tenon right here and as I go to the bottom. So I'm going to start with the top of this tenon. Uh, and for that I'm going to use this expander right here. A lot of people call this can opener style because uh, it's almost like you're opening a can. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm going to do, put that in between these two rollers. What happens is, is these rollers get closer and closer on a very incremental basis. So what I do is when I, I uh, squish that down, it expands 
that tenon. So I'm going to put this in, put it down, kind of zero it out, and then just give it a quick turn. So you can see why it's important to clean off the tenon, the outside, and then actually the inside as well, because I don't want to dig any dirt, grit, and grime into that tenon. I've seen it where it's been gouged. Well, that could also vent from the, the actual expander themselves. So, so now I'm just going to just check the fit, see if it feels a little bit tighter. We still got quite a bit of wiggle. Okay, so the whole thing is definitely needs to be expanded quite a bit. But I start at the top here because I want to still be able to check it. If I started at the bottom, what would end up happening, I would maybe end up flaring this bottom out. So then I can't physically put this in and check it. So I start at the top here and I basically do this. And as I go, I bring it out like that. Okay, so here we're too small. I bring the top out. And then as I go, I work towards the bottom. I don't want to do this. Okay. And the other thing about it, when you come to expand this, this bottom section of the tenon, it does tend to expand a lot quicker than the top portion. Okay, so you have to be very careful. So I'll put that back in, maybe turn it up a bit. Go through a few more turns. And you're just allowing the neck to spin with your with your left Correctly. hand. Correctly, yeah, I'm guiding it because I don't want that to, as it's going to twist this way, I want to make it stay nice and parallel, I guess, or perpendicular, depending on your orientation. So, give it a couple turns. And now again, we're just checking for the physical fit and feel. Okay, a little less wiggle. I can feel it fit loose here where we hadn't expanded all that much, but as I put it in, you can see it gets a little bit tighter in the wiggle. Still there just a little bit. All right. So now at this point in time, I can start working myself down the tenon. So I did it here. So now I'm maybe going to move to the middle portion of the tenon, working towards the bottom. And do a couple quick or rotations. Check. Just the this, just the, the overall feel. We haven't done any of the leak testing yet. We're just doing the overall feel. And you can see it's getting tough mm. to go in there. It's, it's right about there. It's getting real tough. So now what has happened, and this is completely normal, is that it's actually overexpanded. So now what we have to do is we have to shrink this tenon down to fit. And that's really my preferred method to fit next is I almost expand just a little bit more than I need to. And then I shrink it down with one of these collets. Okay. So the first thing is picking a collet that is the correct size. So if I pick this one, you can see here, way loose. This is not going to effectively shrink down my tenon. In fact, if anything, this is going to turn my round tenon into an oval tenon. Uh, so let's try this one right here. We're, we're doing the Goldilocks. Okay. So let's see here. This one, oh, as you can see, definitely not going in. Okay. Way too small. Okay. Too big, too small. We have two sizes here. Now let's just try this one just for fun. This one's okay. It's a little tight. Might be able to make it work, but let's see this one there. Again, it fits. It's not as loose as this one, but it's still loose. So I'm going to use the one that's maybe a little tight. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's going to be very close. So here we are with our neck shrinker. I'll put the collet in. When this handle is like this, that's when it's engaged. So I'm going to engage it. I'm going to tighten this knob up. Now I've zeroed out my collet. I'll give it one click and now I'm starting to do my, my shrinking. So I'm going to put the neck in. I engage, I disengage, engage, dis disengage, and sometimes I'll do maybe a little spin. Okay. On one notch, a little turn. So now I'm going to go back and check. Again, we're just doing it by physical feel. We haven't used our leaf tester yet. Going a little bit better. Yeah. It, it's, it's there. It's still a little tight. And at this point, I have two options that I can do, depending on the severity of this kind of binding. Um, I can shrink it a little bit more, or I can lap it, right, with some lapping compound. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to give it one quick little shrink, and then we'll go in and do some lapping. So I'm going to up this one notch. 
And so every turn of the knob there is half a thou. Half a thou. Okay. So you're just shrinking it ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. It's just half a thou. I just did one click. Again, it doesn't matter how hard you do this because now it's not engaged. Now it is engaged. Now it's not engaged. Okay. So it's not really how hard I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. But the tool do all the work for you. So there we go. Just a little bit of shrinking. Well, let's give it a feel now. Better. Much, much better. Hmm. Okay. I can still free it up a little bit. And for that, I would use some lapping compound. I would put a little bit on the, on the tenon and I would work that in and out to make that feel a lot smoother. But let's check our leak tester reading. So I'm going to turn this back on. I still have my neck leak isolator here in the receiver. I'm going to check to see. There it is, airtight. You can see it went down to zero. I'm going to go ahead and put this in like so. And let's see. There we are. Now, the other thing you notice, and this is kind of a byproduct of fitting it to be airtight, is the wiggle is gone. Right? The other thing is this next screw is still very loose. And it's still an airtight fit. So there we are all the way down to zero. So I might finish this up with a little bit of light lapping just to make it feel nice and smooth. Okay. All right. Um, side bonus tip I mentioned about the, the, the receiver here is anytime your saxophone neck is not in the receiver. So if it's in the case, make sure that this neck screw is not tight. So keep it loose. What will end up happening is if, you know, you put your instrument away, you go back and you tighten this neck screw up, that slot right in the center will actually start to, it pulls together. And then what happens is your neck receiver turns into an egg. Okay, as you can see right there. So it goes from being round, you keep that tight, it wants to turn it kind of into an egg. So anytime you don't have the neck in it, keep this loose. And I didn't know that for a number of years. Hmm. I, I used to tighten this down. So yeah, that's going to save you a lot of, um, you know, work on fitting your neck and hopefully will prolong the fit of your neck. So we've gone over how to shrink it, how to expand it. And, and that tool that you have there, our, mm -hmm. uh, our shrinker, is that the same tool that we used to fix the neck pull down? Yes, yes. You can use this where you can put the neck in there and you can actually hold this. I'm using this as kind of a holding fixture because this tenon, this, I'm sorry, this collet will grab the tenon nice and evenly. So, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have this thing as long as you have a tenon or a collet to hold the tenon, you can pop it in a vise, but this is a nice way to put it in there. You engage it, and then you're able to kind of lightly pull up that neck. But yes, it is the same tool. Now, are you also able to shrink, use the shrinking dies that we make without the shrinker? Is it possible? Yes. yes. So if you don't have maybe the funds to, to buy the really nice shrinker, you can get just the collets. And again, it's not as controlled. And just like if you have one of those old school style screw top, you know, expanders, it's not as controlled, but you can take it, put it in, and then you can put this whole collet in a vise okay, or something to, to gently squeeze this. You can use, if you have a, a big lathe, you can put it in your headstock of your lathe. But most people, if they don't have the actual shrinker to go with the collets, and they just have the collets, you can put this in a vise. Just crank it down a little bit, maybe give it a little rotate, crank it down a little bit, uh, and then make sure you're checking. So a little bit of, of correction and a lot of checking. Now, as far as we had talked about in the beginning of the video, if you don't have a leak tester, how do you check the connection um, without a leak tester? Sure, yeah, if you don't have the, the, you know, the neck leak isolator, you don't have a leak tester to test it out, um, you're gonna have to do it by, by playing it. You play it before, so obviously you'll probably have some looseness in your neck. You'll play it, kind of make a mental note of how it responds, especially down low. And then what you would do is you would take some cork grease. Okay, and I, luckily I have it in this. This is the Ultimax cork grease in the syringe. And I'm just going to apply it mainly to that top portion of the tenon. And as you can see, I'm being kind of, kind of liberal with my application of cork grease because what I want to do is when I insert this into the receiver, okay, 
that cork grease is filling up all those gaps and hopefully giving me a little bit more of an airtight seal. All right. So, uh, excuse me. So then what you would do is you would actually play it. You would kind of A, B comparison. Well, does it play better now that I've had this cork grease on? Um, if it does, then obviously you, you realize that your, your neck and your receiver is not fitting tight. Uh, the biggest tip off is if there's some, some wobble to it, you know, if there's some wobble to it, chances are your neck is not going to fit correctly. So that's the kind of the down and dirty way of doing it. Um, now, what about the, uh, if you don't have cork grease, is there other method that you can use to test? Absolutely. Another, another good way. Yeah. If you don't have cork grease, which you should, um, but if you don't, you can get some of this Teflon tape. Okay. And this is some blue monster tape um, that we have. I tear off a little piece. So, and I'm going to, again, wrap that in that same area, which is at the top of the tent. Just do this like so. And I do the same thing where I just insert the neck. And this Teflon tape is thin enough that it will compress, and again, giving me an airtight seal. So now I can test to see if my neck, in fact, does need to be fit. And what about if a tenon is really damaged? Like, at what point um, would you? This is just a question that I, that I have. Uh, when would you actually replace a tenon? Um, I would replace the tenon if it's severely damaged and I can't get it to be completely round. Okay. Um, a lot of times you'll see older tenons that have gouges in it, um, and it could be from you know this type of machine. Uh, you know, you know, putting those gouges in at that point in time, it's very tough to get an airtight seal. Um, it can be done. You can get an airtight seal with, you know, the, the, the receiver fitting against the tenon. Um, but if you have gouges in it, it or if it's not completely round, um, that's when you would replace okay. the, the tenon. Um, and it is much easier to replace the tenon than it is to replace the receiver. So if you have some damage to your receiver, it's, it can be a little difficult to replace the receiver. Obviously, um, what I've done here in the Saks Pro Shop is if I do have to custom make a new receiver, I will automatically make a tenon to go with it. I'm not going to trust that old tenon mm. to fit on a brand new receiver. And then uh, just as far as like some alternative methods, um, can you use a plug gauge and mm -hmm. tap on the, uh, the area to, to fix this problem or to solve it? Yes. Um, a lot of times what will happen, oh man, this is super airtight now. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times what will happen is right here in the receiver, we have this slot. And like I said, if you keep your neck screw too tight or whatever happens throughout time, this round receiver turns into an egg. Well, that gap is right here at the bottom with that, where that slot is. So a lot of times uh, technicians will put a plug gauge, which is just a highly machined cylindrical piece. They'll put it into whatever fits tight as possible and they will tap down right under that, that slot tends to hump up. They'll tap that down to kind of re-round the receiver. And that works a lot of times. And then Ryan, how how tight should the um, how tight should the the fit of the neck be uh, before you tighten the neck screw? So you fit the neck. Yep. Uh, how tight should it be? It Good should question. be honestly it, when you put that neck into the receiver, it should be airtight even without you having to tighten the neck screw. So you shouldn't rely on the neck screw for your airtight connection. It should be the fit of the tenon in the receiver. If your tenon is shaped, you know, like this, and your receiver is shaped like this, obviously you're going to have some gaps here at the bottom. Um, but it should fit airtight from the very beginning. Um, that tighten, and it really should tighten just that last quarter of a turn. Mm -hmm. As you tighten it, you'll feel those, the threads start to catch, and then just a quarter of a turn from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, um, then it should be tight. Um, but that's, that prevents your neck from turning. Okay. So the, the neck screw really prevents it from turning. The airtight fit should already be there. Excellent. Well, Ryan, thank you for that awesome demonstration. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been our Wednesday Wisdom. If you like this live stream series, uh, feel free to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Uh, next week, we're going to be back with Ryan talking about dry fitting saxophone pads. Uh, we're also going to be having a course on the basics of saxophone repair on June 21st. And we're also having a June 21st, 22nd, 23rd, right? That's right. Three days. And uh, we're also going to be doing a clarinet course on June 17th on uh, an advanced technique on crack pinning. Uh, so stay tuned for those. Check out musicmedic.com for that. And until next time, happy repairing.